Crime Church, Winston Story, Chapter 4, where animals... Fuck! Fuck! My head is sticking out through the sunroof, and I'm venting venom as we scream south on the highway, doing well over 120, towing 140 k's on some of the straights. I hate my fucking life! I scream into the wind, fuck Anushka! Fuck Mumsy! Fuck Marty! Fuck Jacob Slattery! Have a drink, boy. Rat Boy passes the bottle to Jack and I plop back into the middle of the seats. Guzzle it. Yeah, my bar is in the back. I got the padding, got a place for my feet, got my smokes. My stomach punches a fistful of vomit up my throat and I have to chew it and suck it back down to stop it from spurting over the driver in front of me. I've chosen to sit in the back because this fella behind the wheel... Goblin is an absolute mental case of a driver. What started as a quick spin around the block with my boys home in time for robots and some YouTube, it turned into a visit to the Brockworth boots pad and, well, it morphed into a road trip out down south and I had to go with it, you know, I had to be a man, had to be a man. The boys who invited me to jump on the cross of Valiant, they wanted me to buy the beers, the burb, as much as they wanted to smash me. I bought it, I survived, now Rat Boy is drooling as I get promoted a little bit. So even though it's a Tuesday, this guy Grapple has announced we have to drive hours down to Dunners, then northwest into the Otago wilderness to pick out some carrot called Big Tony for a party. I've never met this Big Tony guy. Big Tony guy has been staying at this vineyard on the edge of a huge river, hours out into the countryside, Riverton I think it is, or like Alexandra or something. So we cut down stoppage time by pissing in plastic bags instead of getting out of the car. The whole Brockworth Boots Collective owns the Valiant together, the dude in the passenger seat with a fetal alcohol syndrome tells me. Driver Goblin adds that he's just minding the car for some full-time fourth Rikers locked up in Papa Roo. Pang of fear ripples through me and I try to tap the ash of my cigarette far away from the Valiant's upholstery, but I look around and all the other boys are being pigs, so you know what? Fuck it. We keep biting holes in the piss bags, squirting each other with piss so that we constantly need to stop. All we have to wash the piss out of our shirts is beer. <laughs> We're animals, man. We're baboons. We're hairless apes. We squeal through Dunedin Southside, around the stadium, then southwest, past the Mosgill side on the hill, deep into the boondocks, and then the road goes black. All we can see are headlights and our own cigarette embers. After a narrow silence smoking while Slayer punches the speakers, Colin picks up Big Tony without killing the engine. He straps Big Red suspenders over his shoulders as he marches down the driveway, nicking a crate bottle, tossing it onto a rock, entering the car with a big ass burr that makes us all pinch our noses. Big Tony's head is shaved so close to the skull it's like a marble. We smash one of his Gooses on the way back down the driveway. The goose's ripped off wing is stuck under the wipers, so whenever Goblin tries to wipe the windscreen, it smears rainbows of blood and we laugh our asses off. When we make it to the Mosgill McDonald's, there are a couple of skanks walking to some party. Like, I'm talking girls with white belts and black t shirts spilled with rhinestones. So we drive the girls around Mosgill a couple of times, and then the older dudes root them on the bonnet of the car, and then we drive them home. Big Tony has lumberjack strops on the boot. They're long, fat strops, you know, strong enough to hold trees upright while their trunks are sawn, because that's what he does during the day, apparently. He cuts down trees. So we cruise slowly down this haunted industrial street, and we park up outside this marae, you know, like this Mari church place. We wrap the strops around the post holding up the gate. It won't be hard to rip a hole in the Mari fortress. Boys... Big Tony asks, raising his eyebrows. Master Kyle has asked for a demonstration of our commitment to the cause. Are we going to take the power back for the white man? Tear it down! My heart is struggling to escape my ribs. The ghostly face of a ticky shouts at me. Stop! Stop, you guys! Everyone turns to study. I have half a second to come up with a good reason for lonely buzz. Let's, 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 um, let's do something else instead. You know, something. I mean, like, I don't know. <laughs> come on, can we do the curry shop right? Can we get some Indians? Oh, whatever. Marys aren't shit anyway. Tough in a group, but get them on their own. They are soft as anything, bro. So we smash in the windows of this Indian restaurant, then we crash at the eagle's nest. That's this pad belonging to some Nazis in, like, South Dunners. 
The Dunedin boys are hardcore full-timers. No weekend hijinks for them as Forthright there, some road nights there. They've all done lags at Invercargill or Milton. They talk about the Order and the Chosen Few and Lone Legion and Satan's Slaves and Celtic Warriors and honestly, I barely keep up. It's a four and a half hour drive back up to Christchurch. <laughs> Crime Church, more like. We do it in three hours, and we only do it by heading 150 k's an hour as much as we can, carving up tracts of hills and swamps and beaches beside Timaru and Omaru. I text Mumsy while we're driving, in case we don't make it, I love you and Dad, tell him. I want desperately to farewell Marty, my stupid ass brother, but you know what, it's too gay telling a man that you love him. Anyway, we close in on home, we blaze past the cookie time factory and then the jail at Rolleston and by now Goblin is asleep at the wheel and oh my god, holy fuck, we're heading for a ditch and Big Tony burns him with a ciggy to wake him up and we squirt to a sudden stop in the gravel and we're outside the Rolleston Hotel and we are all panting and looking at each other. Two hours and fifty minutes, boys. Big Tony goes, turning to us from the passenger seat, smirking. Not bad for a four-hour fucking drive. <laughs> I've been expecting to die for the last three hours. This whole road trip has scared the skin off me. I'm so desperate to crawl under my Pacific Express duvet that I feel like crying. I don't know if I'm cut out for this kind of shit. Rat boy. Rat boy just wakes up and sucks down more sticky liquor and goes back to sleep. Jeez, rat boy, man. I need you. So the pub at this Rolleston place? Oh, I've never really been in a pub. It's pretty cool not to be ID'd and shit. The pub has a fat-bellied woman on the bar with a kind, vulnerable face. Beers here are only six bucks. But I'm desperate for juice and milk or water. My body is crying for everything I took for granted. I'm trying to suck strength into my chest because of this caveman looking thug in the corner while he's devouring me with his eyes. He's some kind of like gold coloured like Finn Diesel lookalike with a shiny scalp and a big nose and chin and he's patting a dirt bike helmet. <laughs> yeah, I know. A dirt bike helmet. So he's sitting in the darkness with two skanks dressed in jeans and corn t-shirts on his lap. Talking chicks with black hair and piercings spattered across their face like shrapnel. Big Tony is over with the caveman. Saying to the skanks, we've got a bottle of bourbon in the boot, is that us sussed? My crew, <laughs> my crew is thinned down to just four people plus me. That's down from seven. Two of them play pool, one of them bargains to get a good price on beer, and then there's just me and Rat Boy, who I'm holding upright while he tries to wake. Epitaphs. 88's all the fucking way. Big Tony is going, shaking his head dismissively. Epitaphs. Headhunter's cunt. I choke down a round of pool and some darts. You know, manly sports, I have to pretend I can comprehend. Goblin and Grapple become fascinated with the harness racing and they're getting into a big debate about the trots with a couple of Marys clad in Bathurst jackets in the corner. The fight explodes as sudden as hail. The caveman is one moment dragging a thick steel stool across the floorboards. Next moment, it annihilates my skinhead guys like an asteroid. A second stool knocks down the Bathurst Marys and explodes against a poking machine, spattering the pool tables with glass. Vin Diesel caveman is climbing through the wreckage with his shoulders hunched and his eyes fixed on who? All of us? Big Tony's on the floor. Killed up like a sleeping dog. The girls are scrambling upstairs while the caveman terminator destroys the room. So our so-called gang runs back to the car in a panic. We're hovering on the lip of the highway and the heel of Goblin's hand is pushed hard on the car horn. Come on, Tones, you have to wake up. When the caveman's dirt bike starts revving, then it rumbles up alongside us as he parks in front of the car. That's strong, ah, oh, Sam, somebody whispers. I heard he knocked out his dad when he was like 12, bro. Turned him into a vegetable. His face is swelling red with effort. He's off his bike, bending over in front of the Valiant, ripping the chrome bumper off with bare fingers. If we ran Chong over and killed him, it would only make him angrier. 
Epitaphs! I don't know why he's so mad. There's some sensitive politics going on somewhere. But I promise I am going to fuck the so-called Chong up someday. For now, I duck and I cover my ears and I try to read the phone perched between my knees to see if my mumsy has responded to me before I die.